be looking into the situation of uh, the situation of hell and the the beasts of the earth which is mentioned in revelation 6 about how one day these beasts that are these demons that are connected to hell will eventually be unleashed amongst the public in a terrible time in the future but we need to explore hell first before we can understand what's going on on the earth just now you know because of the my other research so we're going to look at um, the near-death experience by Jeffrey Long, who's a scientist. He's a, a doctor. And he did um, scholarly work in thousands and thousands of, of uh, near-death experience. And he says that, that there is a life after death. He says it's a fact. He doesn't know, um, you know, he, because of the amount of cases he went through. And he says that hell does exist as well. He's convinced that, that there really is a place called hell that people have been tortured in. So we're going to be looking into the situation of hell. This is just for people that want to explore uh, Jeffrey Long. Now what we find is that non-Christian people have had near-death experiences of going through a tunnel. And they go through the light at the end of the tunnel. And they go to a heavenly-like place and they see dead relatives, okay? Welcoming them there. But of course this is a deception. When I came across Brian Melvin in his book called Hell's Dominion, he actually explains what's actually going on there because of his experience. He was an atheist as well. And of course, we're going to be looking into Mary Baxter's work as well of, of Hell um, to help us to understand. She's, you could say that she's a leader to help us understand how it works. And basically, Hell is a, is a deep place into the earth with different levels of punishment. And... Um, we're depending on the evil deeds that people have done on earth, they'll get punished for that. Christians that have turned their backs on God get the worst punishments. So I've got a map, okay, of, of what she had seen of, of hell, hell's dominion. Um, Brian Melvin, he's, he's actually in the area of the belly of hell. He's in that location um, of where he saw these gel gelatine-like cubes of people having a false illusion of thinking they're in a heavenly like place but they're actually in hell so basically what happens to Brian Melvin is that he has a near death experience um, he goes through the light at the end of the tunnel and he goes through um, and he, he he goes through, through the light and he lands in a countryside with a house on a hill he said has people run to him telling him that they love him he realizes that these people were people who had, were dead and people that are that are still alive and this is what made him think to himself that these can't be people because how come there's people here that are still alive on earth and then of course he realizes these aren't people and then the people turn into demons and they try to claw at him and they try to to rip him apart okay then one of the reptilian demons he has to say jesus christ to to get the the demons off him um one of the demons rept, rept, reptilian type demon um motion him to go uh, follow it he goes to the the end of the horizon it makes a hole in the sky and then they both step through it and that's when he realizes he's in hell he realized he stepped out of a cube 10 by 10 feet in square and the cube gave the illusion of being outdoors in a countryside in a lovely place even then Brian, st he also noticed that there was thousands of other cubes with people trapped inside of them, the, of, of their false worlds. The floors of these cubes would move treadmill-like to stop people moving to the inner walls of the cubes. And also when demons enter the cube, the person cannot see the demon, okay? They're able to be remain invisible to the person inside the cube. Then the demon manifests and, and creates an illusion of a person. Um, the person in, in the cube sees the illusion of a person as being solid, okay? Like as if they may be meeting a dead relative. Um, but from outside of the cube, Brian noticed that the illusion of the person looked transparent-like. Um, you know, the, the, the demon can clearly be seen in the cube with the person, but the person can't see the, 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 the demon. It can only... They can only see the illusion of the person. Uh, so that's basically what um, happens. So there could be a situation where the person is, in a, is having a party, maybe. 
and the demons will be in there pretending to be guests they'll give the illusions of being uh, maybe dead relatives and they'll have conversations and then of course what happens usually is that the demons start playing mind games with the person and they start torturing the person um, like for instance one woman that used to sacrifice children well the demons pretended to be children to her like babies and then the babies would jump on top of the woman and start clawing at her and then start tearing off her flesh and start biting into her and then the woman would be, would be screaming you know that's just one of the the situations that Brian Melvin had seen done in hell um, while she was inside of a cube you know that the because the woman used to be a temple prostitute about 59 BC I think it was he said um, sometime in BC uh, time period but the woman was her, her, she had the illusion that she was seeing the babies that she had sacrificed and uh, the babies would turn on her and start biting her it was really demons of course um, given the illusions of babies but the babies would start tearing at her flesh and she was screaming in, in horror at what was happening to her in, in this inside of this cube that gave the illusion that she was at a temple place you know so that's just an example um, that you could buy the book and read all the stories of what happens to people down there some people think they're in a heavenly heavenly like place until the demons start tormenting the person now what we're going to do now is going to look at Bill Weiss he was in an unknown location of hell um, really uh, rough area of, of hell one of the don't know, I don't know, I, I, it sounds pretty bad anyway, but this is what he experienced because of how bad it was. He went through a tunnel, um, he felt the heat uh, there. He said that some of the pain was blocked from him. He, he eventually lands in this prison cell. He then says that the heat sh should have incinerated him because it must have been thousands of degrees. Um, and also Brian Melvin also said that the, where he was, there was a lot of heat there as well. He said he could see the heat waves down there. So Brian Melvin, you know, it's, uh, some areas are, are cold and damp in hell, some areas are hot and dry. It just depends on where the fires are. Um, um, Bill could not move while it was lying on the ground in this, uh, uh, with his naked body. He said he saw, he felt he could not get enough oxygen and he thought he would suffocate to death, but, but he could not die. He also breathed in toxic sulfur fumes that should have killed him also. Um, you know, when he was trying to get a, 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 at least some kind of oxygen, but he, he felt like he was going to suffocate to death. A huge 13 foot uh, reptile demons uh, paced around. One of them paced around the cell, and one of them picked him up and threw him against a wall. He felt his bones breaking. Uh, a demon ripped his stomach apart. This is the one with the fins all over his body, so it's almost fish like uh, type of demon creature really tall uh, about 12 feet tall or something 13 feet uh, Bill, Bill was taken over to a pit a mile across full of fire he sees people as skeletons in the fire burning with flesh hanging off them he says the screams of these people were pier piercing and un unbearable to listen to because he was listening to uh, I mean millions and millions of screams of people you see and he wanted to get away from the screams he, sa he says he saw the thirst down there was, was was extreme he said it felt like you know if you could run around a desert with cotton buds in your mouth and he says that the thirst was just unbearable he says he the fear of, of, of being about by of just being about by these demons uh, you know he says the fear of death you know of just about to die is there but you never die um, You know, he saw maggots everywhere, giant spiders about four feet, uh, big spiders they were, crawling on some of the walls. 